Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create this. Now those of you that have watched the excellent TV series Fringe will probably recognize it's an effect that disease heavily in that. Um, failing that, you may also have seen something very similar in the opening title sequence to a movie called Panic Room. Now I'll uh, warn you in advance, this is going to be a two-stage tutorial because uh, I really don't think I can get all three of the key stages into the 10 minute YouTube time limit. And also, you will need the um, CS5 version of Photoshop and a third-party tool called PFHO from Pixel Farm. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is Pixel Farm's PFHO 2.2. It's the standard version, which costs around uh, 99 US dollars, and frankly, it's worth every cent. There are other tools on the market like uh, Buju and Synthize, and even Pixel Farm's own. PF track, but for what we're going to do here, the standard version of PFHO is more than sufficient. So the first thing to do is load our footage. As you can see, I had this open in the uh, the final project. It's actually a piece of handheld moving camera work, shot in the comfort of my own lounge. Now the first thing you need to do with PFHO is compensate for any barrel distortion caused by the lens. Now I shoot with an HVX 202, and at wide angle. Um, there is a very definite um, element of barrel distortion. So to compensate for that, um, scrub the timeline until you find you've got a nice um, high contrast line like this one or this pillar here or in particular this one close to the edge and just hit this uh, calculate lens distortion button. That will then analyze the frame into lines and we'll just click on this line here and we'll automatically use that value to um, compensate for any lens distortion that your camera may have caused. Now the next button in the list is actually uh, an image mat. Um, this is particularly useful for um, removing moving objects within the frame um, from the uh, analysis at the end. Obviously if you have something that's moving around it's going to throw the, uh, the camera track out. Now obviously we don't have anything in this frame other than the static components, so we'll just uh, we'll skip that one. And move straight on to the track features. Now this is the, uh, the core of what PFHO does, so I'll uh, press that button and you can see how it works. Basically what it's doing here is uh, finding points within the frame that it can easily identify, and it tracks them as the camera moves to uh, get a clear idea of where the camera is how it was pointing and what the uh, what the frames doing in terms of motion it does take a while so I'll uh, I'll shut up and let it do its business okay so it's uh, tracked all the points that it's found in the scene and uh, this chart across here with the uh, the green values in it indicates that it's extremely confident um, that it's got an effective track you'll see in the uh, the frame itself there are color-coded points. Um, red indicates that it's not confident that it's followed that point accurately. Um, yellow, less confident, and green, very confident. So uh, if we look at this one here, it's pretty much confident that it's followed this track 100% throughout the entire frame. Whereas these elements, maybe not so sure. Okay, so the next step is to click on the Estimate Focal Length and Scene Orientation. Now this is the tricky bit that requires a, a little bit of trial and error. Um, best thing to do here is find a frame where you've got a bit of space to play with and a really, really good point of reference, um, like this chest in the middle of the floor here. Click on the button and it'll bring up this cube and floor and horizon line. Now what we're going to try and do here is match the cube to the perspective value of the frame as we see it. And we do that just by dragging points around. Now as I say, it does take a bit of trial and error, but you can always um, play with the uh, end result later on to get a better effect. And what you're looking for here is lines that match up to the perspective in the scene. Now we've got actually we've got quite a lot of um, straight lines that are really useful for this. But even so, it does take a little bit of trial and error. 
Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. And as I said, we can always make some fine adjustments to it later. Um, so move on to the next stage and that's solve for camera motion. So hit this button. And basically what PFO will do is take the cube that you've drawn, analyze the track points that it's analyzed in the frame, and then create a 3D camera track from the information that it's gathered. So now that it's finished, as I scrub through the timeline, you'll see that the plane that we defined earlier tracks fairly accurately with the scene as the camera moves around. Now there are a few points that are obviously a little bit out of whack. For example, this line here in particular isn't lining up very well with the, uh, the perspective of the trunk. So to make any fine, fine adjustments, we move on to the next stage. And that's the adjust overall scene position and orientation. And when you click on that, it brings up this uh, series of arrows, pointers. If you hold down space, you get access to a bunch of tools. Now the most useful one here is the rotate ground plane, which gives you a bunch of circles, which you can use to rotate the plane that you've defined in 3D space. So I'm just going to tilt it on the y-axis and see if we can't just improve the perspective in shot. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, next stage is to um, actually put this point of origin down here and move it to uh, a more useful position. Now our 3D text is going to be tr tracking with a, a focal plane on the top of this uh, top of this chest and as I showed you earlier the uh, the tracker was really happy with the uh, the overall tracking of this point here. So I'm just going to click on that point, hold down space and select move origin to feature and that will shift that plane of origin onto our new point. Okay, I'm still not entirely happy with the uh, the angle of the floor. So I'll just uh, cant that a little. Okay, I'd say that's pretty good. Now, um, I've seen a couple of other tutorials and uh, one of the things they point out is when you export this camera data to uh, After Effects, you're confronted with a significant number of null objects. Um, basically, for every point it's tracked in the scene, you'll get a null object created. Now, um, we don't actually need all of those null objects to be exported. So what I'd like to do um, before we export is just delete all of the tracking points that we are not going to use. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use this, what we'll call the hero point here, to, uh, to match our 3D text into the scene. So I'm just going to... Um, draw on the frame to highlight any unwanted points and we'll just delete them. Okay, so that's all of the points in the scene removed but as you can see it hasn't affected the, uh, the plane that we've created. So when you're happy with the end result next step is to export the undistorted version of the movie. Once you've exported the uh, undistorted version of the, uh, the video, um, final step is to export the camera data. So I'll click on the final step and make sure that After Effects is selected from the export format. Now you'll notice this is the .ma file. Now that's actually a Maya scene file, but After Effects supports this. Leave the scale factor at 100. Pick your um, file save location and file name and hit OK. OK, so that's it for this stage of the tutorial. In part two, I'll be showing you how to create the uh, 3D titles in Photoshop using a brand new feature called Repousse. And uh, then I'll mix all the elements that we've built using After Effects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part two.